Welcome to Healthy Leagues, the one-stop podcast that bridges the gap between small to mid-sized businesses and digital marketing. In this interconnected age of the internet and artificial intelligence, if you are looking to increase your online lead flow and close deals, or just someone interested in the fusion of business growth and digital marketing, this podcast is your avenue for success. Now let's get to our host, Brian Atkinson. Welcome, everyone, to the Healthy Leads Podcast brought to you by Ellington Digital. Today, we are going to be talking about how to create a lead magnet. I'm super excited for this podcast, Angel, on a scale of 1 to 10. I know you're an expert in this area. How excited are you for this episode today? It's, it's, it's always a 10. Every week is a 10, man. <laughs> Every week it is a 10, no matter the topic. I love, I love that. And we got some cool news to start us off today. Cool for us maybe to interpret, but maybe not so cool for Google because they released their new AI competitor, ChatGPT Gemini, this past week. People were raving about it, but today a report came out that it was fake. Gemini is a competitor to ChatGPT, and it is designed to outperform human expert on massive multiple language language understandings. Angel, take us through a little bit more of this article and uh, what you basically discovered Gemini here. Yeah. So I remember, I think it was about maybe on Saturday or Sunday, I watched, just kept seeing over and over Gemini, Gemini, Gemini. And I was just like, man, let me just check this out. Cause every freaking week, all I feel like I, all I hear is oh, this new AI tool, this one new. So I checked it out. And honestly, it was really cool. Like watching the video, if you guys have time, like go check out the demo video for what they did. And you'll see that for one, I think that they're just holding up a camera. Like you'll have a view on the left-hand side is a person basically holding the camera. And on the right-hand side is uh, showing the prompt, you know, the, mm -hmm. the engine of, of Gemini. So they did like a picture. They was like drawing a duck at first. And he drew like a line. He was like, he's like, uh, what is this? And he was like, I don't know what it is, but it has curved lines. And then he started drawing it more. Then he was like, it looked like a duck, kind of looked like a duck. It really did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it wasn't the best drawing of it, but then it was like, oh, this is a duck. And then it started explaining it. So basically it has the ability to look at a picture and determine what exactly it is. Like it has the, it has the ability to determine what exactly something is based on the drawing. So I thought it was real you know, at first, yeah. but according to Google's employees, they're saying that it's fake, that it doesn't actually respond respond in that amount of time like it doesn't do all the features that they were saying it does in the demo video so i don't know i don't know what's going on at google i don't know why they're lying yeah one of their uh, employees really outed them yeah, someone from Google leaked this, which I think is super interesting. And yeah, this is a product that once it was released on like Friday, I believe the demo came out or Thursday, people on LinkedIn were freaking out. <laughs> over it. I mean, it's a really cool product, product in theory, but uh, when it's all fake and that comes out, that is not the best look for. Hey, I'm curious. Like, I wonder what the final product really is. Like, compared to compared to what they're releasing on the demo, like, I'm really curious. Okay, well, what is the final product? Like, if I take a picture of something, how long is that load time going to really look like? Is it going to be me sitting there with like the dial-up connection back in the days or something, you know? So Exactly. Know. And if there is correlation equals causation, uh, Google stock is down 1.26% today. Uh, and when it was released, it looks like on Thursday, the stock did jump up quite a bit here, about 130 to about 137, peaking at 138. So that was a very good day for Google. Uh, I think that's a little bit over 2%, uh, but now it's down 1.26%. Uh, so obviously people are reacting to this. Uh, a lot of people are reacting to this and yeah, not the best look for Google in any sense. You know, you know, it's funny too. Literally when, when Gemini came out and I saw all the news, I was like, dang, my stock portfolio is it's killing it right now. <laughs> I literally in my mind was thinking, dang, my stock portfolio is, is really killing it right now. I might, I might want to sell a few shares, but <laughs> yeah. spoke too soon. Well, let's talk about killing something else in another area. No, not people. Uh, lead magnets. <laughs> um, let's talk about killing lead magnets. And let's just first define, let's kind of set the stage, even set here. Uh, how would you like briefly describe a lead magnet? So a lead magnet to me really is anything, what it should be, I was just, I was just saying. Yeah. What it should be to me is anything that in exchange for value, you're giving, well, you're looking for someone's contact information usually, and you're going to give them an exchange of value for their contact information. And then that's usually a lead for you. And then they call it a magnet just because, hey, it's supposed to be something that attracts them to the offer or whatever you're offering. Yeah, I feel like, uh, and that is a perfect way to put it because so oftentimes, um, basically in the B2B world, sometimes in the B2C world too, like you'll come across something of like gated content. And that's just mm -hmm. another way to think of a lead magnet. It's basically sending over information because you're getting something valuable in return. Yeah. 
I mean, even you can consider the newsletter sign up. That's mm-hmm. it really is. A, if you have a good newsletter, <laughs> like if your newsletter is like, hey, like we're releasing this amount of information every single week, we're touching on these topics and it can actually benefit somebody. It's a lead magnet. You know, like people are entering their in- the email. Maybe you might collect the name, but you're getting lead information. So that's considered a lead magnet. Yeah. And what really the power of like lead magnets are is let's just say you are you have a BDR organization or maybe you're a smaller sales team. But once you're putting out this free information, like a free email, ebook let's say because you have mm-hmm. seven steps to creating a killer product something like that as an ebook once they mm-hmm. insert that information first name last name you're able to phone number email address you're able to cur- curate your messaging about how you reach out to them with a phone call or messaging or email based on that gated content so that's really the power of it and like why you would want to do that yeah i'm, I'm curious on average how much would you say you actually utilize, or if you're coming across a lead, ma- a lead magnet, how often do you usually enter that information and be like, you know, I'll take a look at it? You know, so let's just, some some I do a lot, like gong.io, they have a ton of great like sales resources where like, if I'm looking for something up, they usually have something and I'll always download it. Um, mm. Usually that's followed by an automated workflow with emails. It depends <laughs> really on it. So gong, I'm definitely doing it. A lot of times I'll do it, but I always regret doing it because I know I'm going to get so many spam emails from the it's from, from it. So then, so then the follow up emails that you know come afterward, because I mean, most people usually know. Okay, if I put my email or my phone number or whatever it may be, they're yep. usually expecting to get whatever message, a text message or email. Do you feel like that kind of deters you away? actually putting your information in or is it just that like okay this company just has to work a, this much more harder and give me yeah. this much more value before that i can really put that information in it's a that's a really good question i would say i will always look for a free resource first but mm-hmm. i feel like if the domain has like so like it's so well trusted like a gong like a hubspot like i'm mm-hmm. definitely okay with giving out my information because i know it's going to be so valuable so i think it's important like when you're developing these lead magnets to come off as like a trusted resource because otherwise like i don't want to waste my time filling out this thing if like i'm not gonna have like some sort of value from it so that's actually yeah. how do you approach that i'm curious because well for me being a marketer it's like my yeah. mind is always just like <laughs> i just want to see what the person has you know yeah, so sure. number one like I, I get a lot of advertisements right like i always get a lot of advertisements so i'm really always just looking at it i'm looking at the entire flow okay what does their landing page look like yeah um so usually i'm always just volunteer <laughs> i have like a burner yeah. email account that i just voluntarily give out my information to so but my mind has always just been being that I am a marketer, like I kind of, I'm really uh, picky with the type of emails that I want coming in, you know, like, for example, my favorite newsletter of all time is called Failery. Failery. Yeah. And it's literally just about, well, it first started out as failures and it was about what the business owners learned from it. So like the entire newsletter, every, I think it was like a weekly or bi-weekly, I forgot the cadence, but the, um, they would just send out stories. They would have like startups, like startups that were super big. Then all of a sudden they just crashed. What did they learn from it? What would they not do again? You know, so it's just like being able to see that. I've never seen a newsletter that would talk about fails. Like it's just like, hey, do this. And hey, here's a five tips on how to do this and that. So like that right there would give me value every time because now I get to look at, hey, what do I not want to do? What do I not want to break my leg twice exactly. doing? Because this person who built, who got to $5 million a year and then they failed just doing this one simple step. So yeah. yeah, I think you spoke about like exactly the reason for lead magnets and why, what makes an effective lead magnet is giving value to the people. I think that's mm-hmm. what's going to make something, uh, make a lead magnet, an ebook, a case study, a white paper super valuable is if I'm getting information from it and I can actually take something away from that. And, and I, w- I would add to that a little more because the best lead magnets that I've ever seen and that I've ever you know ran my own self have been ones that the value is so good that you're willing to pay for it. Yeah, and, that, and that's that's big because it's just like some people are just going to create they 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 hear they're going to hear this podcast and they're going to be like oh I just got to throw up an ebook I just got to throw yeah. up a checklist or a template and it's like you're going to throw that up hey you might get some people but the ones that are just a crazy high converting lead magnet are the ones that you would literally pay money for but you just give it away for free. Yeah, and I feel like what that might look like something that just has so much value that you would pay for would be like a course like that's one of the first ones mm-hmm. that come to mind because I feel like courses how I prefer to learn is like if someone's like teaching me like on screen as well I can read and all that stuff but if I'm actually wanting to like learn something like long term I feel like a course is the best way to do that and you can give that away for free that has such high value where someone would actually pay for that and that's how you mm-hmm. really get leads to uh, come through I'm, I'm curious though how many how many courses have you started and actually completed you know I was on, <laughs> I was on like course stuff uh, during COVID 
I was doing a ton of uh, like coding courses. I haven't gotten yeah. into as much anymore. I, the last time I probably did was probably like a year ago when I was doing like a digital marketing course. But yeah, I'd say my rate of doing them is very low. But if I do do them, I will complete them. Okay, okay. For me, I, I'm I'm habitual course starter. Yeah, <laughs> I just I'm a, I always will start a course. Get like it. It just depends. For me, I really it's the instructor. I don't know what it is yeah. like. It, and that's the thing too with lead magnets. It's like if you give out something where the value actually isn't even at the inside of the course like that's what gets to me like when people will offer a free course and it's just like ah you just kind of threw this together and yeah. the thing is too is like when it, something is free you're not going to value it as much so yeah. people do have to take that into account with the courses but maybe even having like the mini courses that's what i really like yeah like having like a quick you know two hour mini course those those are really like my favorite okay let me reframe that then the, so the amount of courses i've done over like five hours i've done zero but like mini <laughs> like two hour ones like i i did not goes out pretty so that's pretty easy yeah. for, me. It's for two hours and complete something so let me reframe how i <laughs> <laughs> exactly because it's just like all the courses that i've tried to start they'll be like i don't know what it is sometimes and and that goes into probably like another episode that we're going to do in the future like an offer right yeah so in the all in the course they're like you're going to learn this and you're going to learn this and that's, and that's exactly how you kind of have to sell a lead magnet as well you got that you really have to have a good offer around it i think that's what really you know scarcity urgency yeah. like hey we're only going to be running this for this amount of time and we only have 20 copies right we're only giving this yeah. to the first 20 people and then actually solving a big problem you know like if people really want to create a lead magnet what i do is like i'll have a um an excel spreadsheet right and i'll create a list of every single as much as pain points as i possibly can of uh my prospective customer whoever i'm going after create an entire list right and you're probably gonna have like 50 you may get to 100 you know for some for some people that just really go crazy but then of course you can use chat gpt type in hey what are the common problems that this xyz person or persona experiences when they're trying to market their services or trying to grow their business whatever i have that list for every Every single pain point, I come up with multiple ways to solve it. Yeah. Like, okay, the for for um, let's let's see, uh, like a, multiple ways to solve. It. So if I was like, oh, how to solve your search terms, right? Yep. A person that's marketing on Google has, oh, I keep getting irrelevant traffic, right? That's like a, it's a very narrow problem. Oh, here's ten ways to get the most qualified search term traffic in seven days. <laughs> you know, like here's five steps in in two days or something. You know, like just easy ways to solve it, just quick one hit of ways to solve it and then like i said i always try to attach like some type of scarcity some type of urgency yeah and yeah like i, I and then i just kind of package it in whatever format do i want it to be a, a template a checklist yep. pdf um whatever it may be and that's that's kind of like the framework of how i'm creating these leads lead magnets for sure and that gives uh i we've talked i think we've talked about this before about a lead magnet that we made one time um essentially what we did is we were handing out like free videos and we were like we we're like we we're like cr get a free explainer video and then we put a value on it, like fifteen hundred plus dollar value mm -hmm. for the first like five companies that sign up. So we put an actual number to like what is this worth? Fifteen hundred dollars mm -hmm. to the first five hundred to the first five companies that sign up to drive that scarcity scarcity and urgency. And we had so many people fill out the form. It was one of it has been our best performing like lead magnet. So yeah. a lot of that comes down to the copy, but also like the value that you're offering within it as well. So the, I think 100%. there's two verticals to hit right there. Yeah. I, yeah. We did touch on that too. Cause I remember, I, was, I think I gave out the suggestion. I was like, make the form, <laughs> make the form longer yeah. so we could block out. <laughs> yeah. That was exactly. a problem we were running into is we were getting so many that we uh, started like really narrowing it down to like, instead of getting on these Gmails, like you have to put in a business email and all that. Yeah. Stuff, so. But yeah, that was definitely one of our best lead magnets. Uh, we, and then within the copy, I mean, a free explainer video is a lead magnet itself, but mm -hmm. also putting the value on there and also the urgency was huge for us. Yeah. So, so you say, what would be a, for your personal favorite then? Yeah. What, what is your personal kind of favorite type of lead magnet then? Yeah, I would say probably the service. Like, so from Alex Hermosi's books, like $100 million leads, mm -hmm. you have like a software spreadsheet or dashboard information, course lessons, interviews, services, run mm -hmm. something free for a few days or physical books. I feel like the services for me would be like the best one because like I'm actually receiving something and trying out like, what's it like to work for, with you? Or like, what does this product mm -hmm. actually do? I feel like that is when I'm most likely to actually fill something out or uh, try mm -hmm. it. Do, do you find yourself becoming a customer usually after those sometimes though? I would say a lot of times, yeah. I feel like uh, once, because once it's basically I'm using it, I'm already starting to adopt it. I feel like there's a lot of times like, oh, like, oh yes, I actually will use this or like, oh, uh, this is what mm -hmm. it feels like. I do like it. Then yes. Yeah. So I feel like, yeah, I, I feel like that is uh, true. It's kind of like a freemium model like that HubSpot has is like a CRM. Yeah. 
I'm a, I'm a, I feel like I've always been like a cheap person. Like, I just take advantage of like the free, the free, the free trial, and I'm just like, all right, I don't, I don't really need no more. Like, but sometimes it's like, I guess that free kind of period gives you. It really does because I'm always the type of person where I get a lot of uh, ever since. So I see a lot of lead magnets, and I'm like, oh, a free trial. I'm just gonna sign up. You know, like why, yeah, why sure. not? So I'll sign up, and then. The one thing that gets me is like, oh, I forget to take my credit card out or I'll, I'll forget to cancel before the trial ends. And now yeah. they charge my card and I'm just like, I might as well just use it. Like, Yeah, exactly. use it. don't get me wrong. We are uh, definitely using a free version of Slack and uh, mm. Monday.com. So I we yep. will achieve the place that we can be, but a lot of times <laughs> we do like to, uh, we, we will pay if we need to. But I'm also curious, like, so we've talked a little bit of like courses. We've talked a little bit about like, like, like free, like services. What are some mm. other lead magnets that you uh, really enjoy using? I like I like uh, templates and checklists. Mm. Okay, preferably just for because like for my industry, like I love a good a template. It's just like it's, for example, like Chat GPT. Here's my ten prompt template, or for a checklist, like I do a lot of audits. So sometimes I just like to refresh my mind and see like, okay, who's giving out the best kind of checklist for an audit, and yep. to see, oh yeah, I wasn't actually checking for this or something, you know. So like just looking for that type of thing. I've always just I love checklists. It's so simple to digest. It's just mm. it's just an easy way for me to get information, and then. I can check it against something. So I'm actively using it. Like one of my favorite, and I paid a, I paid money for this. It was like $80 yeah. or something. It was a complete e-commerce checklist for like, for the website. So like I got to, yeah, like it was like a CRO, you know, how to improve your website for higher conversion rate. So uh, I downloaded that and like, I would use it all the time. Like I would just double check. Okay. I'll go on the website. All right. This is in lookout. I'll go on there. And it, and it was so simple too. The best thing about it is that it's evergreen. Like you create it one time. And you can just keep giving it out. The thing with the freemium model is that let's say you have to, you have some, usually sometimes it might be a fulfillment if it's not a software, you know, so it's like if it's a service-based business and you're giving it out for free, now you kind of have that time commitment, which can pay off, you know, like Mm -hmm. a lot of times people, they may get that free service. Like if it was an HVAC company, if I was an HVAC company, I'll just give out, uh, oh, I'll do xyz i'll check your stuff for free like yeah. AutoZone. i think they like do tire pressure or they'll, they'll go into cool. your car yeah and like check the, the the lights or something now you just you got me for a customer for life you know like i always go to AutoZone. <laughs> so it's like that type of stuff yeah it's easy but i just like that evergreen type of uh, format yeah i was literally just going to bring up that auto zone example because we <laughs> literally have something in our kitchen right now for like a free like check engine light and it's yep. like <laughs> and you check my engine so like i'm gonna <laughs> So I literally went there. That's how I'd be like, I got, I became a customer because I went there and I think it was, yeah. So something was wrong with my car where it was like idling really weird. Yeah. It was like, it was just, it was just acting really weird. Yeah. So I tried to do my Google search, uh, do Google search and I couldn't find anything. So I just went to AutoZone and they just went outside and they were like looking at it. You know, they put the little thing in. They're like, oh yeah, it might just be this problem. And they're like, yeah, just get a $5 thing of carb cleaner and you should be good. <laughs> it was just like it was just like so simple and i bought the five dollar thing of carb cleaner and i came back i probably spent at autozone at least 200 300 dollars now <laughs> yeah seriously <That's> <laughs> so, they're providing so much value to you and they get you in the mm-hmm. door you know but client is thinking you're spending 200 dollars at autozone <laughs> exactly so it's like sometimes you have to really look at okay this free this free service that i'm giving out or the, maybe sometimes people are like oh i don't want to create a whole entire guy that's going to take me 10 20 hours you know to really because yeah. I would create a really good guy. Like I wouldn't just baloney the guy because you know people would be like, oh, complete guy to this 2023. And it's really not even that. You yeah. just kind of recycled it every year. Yeah, they recycle it every year. They throw it in ChatGPT and say, make a quick guy, and they just copy and paste that. So. Exactly. So it's like that that type of stuff. Like they may say, I don't want to put the hours in, but like if you put those initial hours in, you don't really ever have to do it ever again. You could just give it out on Evergreen and is is beneficial. But then if you of course you're doing the freemium, then it's just like really take into account of your numbers. You know, yep. like how many people come back and purchase something after you gave them that that freemium, whatever it may be. If it was a subscription service, 30 days free, how many people come back? You know, track that number. Yeah, I, I love the checklist one because like just that idea is like one that we could use like personally but like i feel like that one is really beneficial because it makes me think of hubspot has like a website grader where Mm. basically you plug in um like your website domain uh so we like ellington digital whatever.com um Mm. you search and it'll give you like a whole audit of like your like your page speed like i would optimize this this and this and mm-hmm. when we were working within HubSpot, we could see what their score was and then like reach out to them and be like, oh, we saw you had a 86 out of 100 grade or like 46 out of 100 grade. Like how we set up time to talk about how we can optimize this or something. Yep. Um, yeah. So and that was I remember 
Or Crazy Egg used to do that too. I don't know if you ever, you know, Neil Patel. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I always see him all the time. So I was like, I remember like when I was learning about digital marketing, this man was just his bald head was just everywhere. So I was <laughs> like, and he would always have like check your your site speed or this this and this. And I'm like, I'm so curious how many leads this man got from that one offer. Seriously, and that's and especially because Neil Patel is like all SEO like digital focus like. Those are yeah. probably like super high quality leads that he was able to just have in his database um, to warm up to actually like close deals. And so that's that speaks to one, like knowing what your audience wants and then two, delivering something so valuable that they are willing to send you your information to get that. 100%. And this just goes back to like make that list of every single pain point that your customer yeah. is experiencing and just come up with solutions for each and every one. You know, like make it be a narrow problem, a very narrow problem that they're having. And you can create resources for days. And now, and now you can just run. I would rather run an advertisement toward a lead magnet rather than just offering something first. Because usually what happens is that you'll offer something at first, right? Like let's say, oh, sign up for Ellington Digital marketing yeah. services, right? <laughs> it's just like, you may offer that, you may shoot that out and one out of every 20 people may convert, right? Yeah. But then it's, if you have a lead magnet, which is free, you know, and it offers a lot of value, you may just get 10 people out of 20. And out of those 10 people that actually, you know, know, like, and trust you now, because you, you gave them something for free and you, they did business, they interacted with their brand. Yep. Two out of those 10 people may convert. So yep. it's like, you know, like there's, there's a huge benefit to the to having a lead magnet kind of first model. For sure. Yeah. And it's just an evergreen uh, content. And I'm going to be honest. I think you have a lead magnet in yourself of like the pain points because I want like to see like this checklist <laughs> for like the content. <laughs> yeah, that will be, be a perfect one. Like literally, I, I should probably create that again. <laughs> we always come with ideas on this. I think that's actually a really good idea. But so on this uh, checklist, we can talk about it, but download it after mm-hmm. the episode. So it'll basically talk about like all the pain points they have. Then like next column would be like an ebook to solve this or something like that. Yeah. Or what's in this checklist? Yeah. So it'll be like the one column is pain points. And then of course there's, a, there's a, I leave like a couple spaces yeah. after that one pain point. And I just say, okay, what are all the ways that I can solve this? Literally, and like you said, like okay, maybe a f- a five step checklist. Oh, that's that's all right. Oh, maybe a a two minute audio download for them, or a a template on how to solve it. You know, like a free Notion template. I love Notion. I don't know why, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> a free Notion template on how to how to fix this. So you know, so it's like you just start coming up with ways to solve the issue, and that's just really how I go. I, I just do. It. I just look at. I just list out every problem, and and like I said, you can use ChatGPT for this as well. Like, hey, what are ten different ways that you can solve this problem? problem and these formats you know like what would be the best way to solve this problem and these formats for this persona i love that that's such a money way to do it i feel like and that just gets the ideas rolling about like oh we should create an ebook about this we should offer like Mm -hmm. a free course or we should offer a free service or make something physical if you have the means to do that so i think that's a really good way to like really start the process of creating like a lead magnet and 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 the best the best thing i love about lead magnet is is, uh the naming part oh yeah like like for us like our so this is the it goes into creating like a good offer, but like the offer we're running for Ellington Digital right now, the only thing I would tweak about it was if if we could uh, solve it was it'd be 30, right now it's 30 leads, 30 book tours in 60 days. You could do like 30 book tours in 30 days. You know, yeah, it's yeah. just like so, something so simple and just like straight to the point. So like you have to package the lead magnet well, you know, so yeah. like you can create it and then everything could be good. You can have an immense amount of value, but if you don't package that lead magnet yeah. well, not a lot of people are even going to read it, you know, so if the headline is off, or if the creative of how you're, you know, offering it out to people is off, they're not gonna, nobody's even gonna download it either. Exactly. And that's what's like the two verticals. Like you need to one, have like the really good lead magnet, but like two, you need to have the copy to like support it and like actually like get people like interested. Um, like 30 mm-hmm. book tours and 30 days sounds a lot cooler than 60 days, but uh, <laughs> that's just a guarantee there. Like 30, like 30 book tours in 60 days, like who yeah. would not just like instantly grab onto that? It's super mm-hmm. intuitive. Like, I'm not even buying the service and I know what you're offering. Um, <laughs> and, and then especially Especially if you have the or your money back guarantee, because yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. what I offer is it's like 30 book tours in 60 days or you don't pay a dime. It's like, dang, I'm like, what the heck? Let me check this out. Yes, it's just like not it. that many people. And then it, the uh, thing is, too, it separates you out from everyone else in your space. You know, like if you have a bunch yeah. of competitors, it's like, hey, like my lead magnet stands out from all your guys's. And then the, the same will go for an offer if you're doing that as well. Exactly. And let's wrap it up with that one. I think that's a really good, perfect usage case example where you can talk one about like the service you're offering and then also the copy there. So Angel, always, always a pleasure speaking with you. Guys, you can find us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube. Thank 
you guys so much for tuning in. We'll be back soon talking about the one-year anniversary of ChatGPT. So, Angel, always a pleasure, like I said.